Cool. Um, so hello everyone once again. Um, welcome to our community demo. Um, today we have uh, uh, Joe from Vagento as a speaker. Um, Joe did a really great job on um, creating some guides how to use Cloud Docker. He's pretty much active on um, you know uh, community groomings we have around the same project. So he wanted to share today um, his experience and uh, uh, the flows he uh, worked on how to actually use the Docker for your cloud development if you already have a project and you never used it before uh, locally, uh, I mean with cloud Docker. So um, uh, let's welcome Joe and uh, Joe, I'll hand it over the word to you. Um, feel free to start when you're ready. Okay. Let's see here, share screen. Okay, can everyone see my first slide and hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, all good. Yeah. All right, well, let's yep. get started then. Uh, thank you, Yevhenny, and uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, so today we'll be discussing how to get your development, your local development environment set up for specifically a Magento Cloud project using Magento Cloud's Docker implementation. And we'll be um, reviewing how to enter a project that's, that, that might already be in, in progress. Uh, my name is Joe Shelton, and I am a, a technical lead at Magento Commerce, which is a, a, a Magento agency, and uh, also a trainer for Magento U, and um, I am active on the uh, Magento Community Engineering Slack channel, if you'd like to get a hold of me. Um, so today we will be discussing um, how to set up a local development environment for a Magento Cloud project using Docker. And this, this Docker version is um, specific to, it, it's, it's provided by ECE Tools version 2002.0.22. Um, so since we're in the initial phases of, of this Docker implementation, a lot changes from version to version. So just make sure you're checking what version of Docker you have. The steps might not be exactly the same. Uh, depending on what version you have, um, we're going to we're going to simulate entering a, a project that's already in progress. So maybe you have you know maybe you've been introduced to a, a cloud project that has already been active for months or a year. Uh, maybe the site is live. It's going to have um, products in the database, possibly customers and orders. And you would like to recreate that that live environment on your local machine for development purposes. That's what we'll, that's the workflow we'll be examining here. And um, this presentation will be appropriate for for developers that are new to either the Magento Cloud platform or the Do the Magento Cloud Docker implementation. Um, there's there's more elegant ways to do everything I'm demonstrating today, but um, this is geared towards people who are maybe approaching a, a Magento Cloud project for the first time. So we'll uh, specifically be examining the workflow for, for the initial setup that you'll need to do on day one, and then um, how you'll maintain that environment on an ongoing basis. So this is um, a, a cloud environment where I've um, uploaded the sample data. The sample data that Magento provides does provide a number of CMS pages and products and even some customers and orders. So this is, this is how we're simulating a, a project that's already in progress. What you're looking at is in a cloud environment and we're gonna recreate what you're seeing here in our local environments using Docker. So here is uh, an outline of the, the setup steps that we'll be using on day one. We're going to uh, we're going to download three essential assets for 
or development to our locals. We're going to prepare the cloud configuration files. We're going to customize those files just a little bit. Then we'll start up the Docker environment. Um, we'll review um, how to create an env.php file. And then we'll, we'll be ready to view our website locally in a browser. All right, so our, our three essential assets for development um, are, are basically your project files or what's in your code repository, um, the database from the cloud environment, and the media from the cloud environment. This is, th these are three essential assets that you would need for any sort of local development, Docker or not. So there's really nothing Docker specific here. We will be using the Magento Cloud CLI and if you if you haven't dug into that CLI yet, I would recommend that you do so because it does give you a lot of a lot of convenience. Uh, it, it saves you a little bit of time every day just because it provides convenient aliases for a number of commands that you would routinely use, like uh, interacting with the Git repository or SSH connections. Uh, all of those routine tasks are made easier by the Magento Cloud. CLI. So just to show you what that looks like, and uh, on the command line, we're going to do just the uh, a base an MGC command, which is MGC is a built-in alias for the Magento Cloud CLI. So you can save yourself a lot of time by just using that alias. And if you just use the plain MGC command, you're going to get a, a list of all the projects you have as, uh, access to, all the cloud projects. And in the leftmost column is a uh, is the ID that you'll need to supply to the next command, which is mcg get, and then the ID of the project you want to get. And this is just cloning the repository, so it's asking you which directory you'd like to uh, clone the project into, and then what branch you would like to check out initially. And then we're going to go ahead and do a, a composer install after that, just to get the full amount of files. Um, Magento does supply a, a, a script that simulates the build process, but I find that this is somewhat uh, destructive to setting up a local environment, so I don't use that, that build script. Um, instead, I just kind of man, manually use composer to bring down the uh, the dependencies. Okay, so now we have all the project files and we've run composer install. Uh, next we'll use the, the Magento Cloud CLI to get the database. So that's just M MGC DB dump. And that's that's automatically, if you have multiple cloud projects, this tool is automatically detecting which, which project directory you're in and what branch is checked out. And it's gonna go into the equivalent uh, environment and, and dump the, the database of the cloud environment and then copy that down to your local, all in one convenient command. So there, now I have a, a database dump in, in the root of my project directory. And next we'll use the MGC mount download command, which is basically just an alias for rsync. So we're just rsyncing the media directory of the cloud environment down to our local. So here come all the, the product images and uh, all the media in the cloud environment. Okay, so next we are going to actually prepare the Docker configuration files. Um, you, when, you're, when you're looking at your, your repository, you might notice that there is no, no docker compose.yaml file, which is the main Docker configuration file. We're actually gonna uh, dynamically generate that configuration file um, using another CLI, the ECE Tools CLI. 
um, and the Docker build command. So this is this is a really nice uh, piece of automation that Magento is providing. It, it does the same job as the cloud environment of, of taking a look at your services.yaml file. And in that file, you have what specific services are defined for this project at, at different versions. So if you've got you know, a database and Elasticsearch and maybe RabbitMQ uh, installed on your project, the, the, this build command is actually gonna take a look at that and give you the appropriate containers to match the specific specifics of your project. So if you have multiple projects, this is gonna generate a different Docker configuration that's specific to each project and really accurately reproduces the, the cloud environment on your local using Docker. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that build process. There's a couple options we're gonna use for the build command. Uh, the first is mode of developer. Um, there is a production mode or a production Docker configuration that would be more appropriate for uh, testing, um, doing automated tests, or, or just a demo of Magento. But since we're, our, our purpose here is to start development on a project, so we're going to use the development mode of, of Docker. And then there's also a sync engine option, and um, we're going to use Mutagen. The, the sync engine is for performance reasons. Um, in, instead of directly mounting the project files into the Docker container, which is something you might see in other document, Docker implementations, um, this, this particularly on Macs, uh, Macs has a very bad performance, high page load times. So we're actually gonna use the sync engine to copy all the project files into the Docker environment and then that is an active two-way sync, so any changes in one environment would be reflected in another, in the other. And then we're gonna move that database dump that we acquired in the last step uh, to a specific location so that it'll automatically be imported. Um, so here we're, we're running that Docker build command and it, uh, it's got simple output. It just says configuration was built so let, let's take a look at the two configuration files that it, uh, it has generated in our project. The first is uh, docker-compose.yaml, which is the main Docker configuration file. And if you're not familiar with Docker, it, is, uh, it resembles a virtual machine, only there's gonna be a, a, different, a different container for each of the services associated with an environment, so you've got a, a different operating system that's that's just for the database, and you can see that defined here in this file. We've got a, a, a container for the database, a separate container for Redis, next is Elasticsearch, PHP, FPM. So on and on, there's a number of different containers that are generated um, to provide a replica of the, the cloud environment and just a little bit of configuration on each of those containers that will make them work. Um, the second file that we just jumped to there was the uh, in the .docker directory, config.php, and this is a distributable file, so it's intended to be kind of a template or a default. And you might recognize um, some of the, the variables and values that are being defined here. These same variables would be in the cloud environment, and they, they control deployment behavior. Um, this is where things like your connection information for services are supplied, like your database and Redis. And there's also some information on routes. And then some other uh, Magento cloud variables at the bottom there that just control uh, many different aspects of a deployment. So those are the two um, configuration files that are dynamically generated they're very specific to, to the project. And now we'll take that, um, the database dump, the, that long, long named file there is the database dump we generated in the, um, in the, in the last step. And we need to move that into dot docker slash MySQL slash Docker entry point in it. 
um, directory. And then once we create our, our Docker environment, actually start it up, that dump file will be automatically imported into the database. Okay, so now we're going to um, take a look at a, at a slight customization that I make to, to my Docker environments. The, 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 this is not a required customization. Things would work as is, but uh, I work on multiple cloud Docker projects, so the customization I like to make is, is making the, the namespace a little bit less generic. So just to give you an example, going back into that uh, docker compose.yaml file, you've got, for instance, your, your database is gonna be Magento 2. But if you have, say, three cloud projects, um, they're all gonna have their own Docker environment and the database on, in each of those environments would be named Magento 2. I, I prefer when I'm executing SQL queries on a database to you know, kind of double check the name of that database just to make sure I'm, I'm targeting the right database. Easy to get confused when things are named the same. So I'm gonna change that na database name to something project specific. And then also down here, you've got the, the host name, um, or, or th this is actually the domain name that you'll put into a browser in order to access the, this environment. And um, I'm gonna change that from magento2.docker to something project specific, because I wouldn't want multiple projects to be accessed with the same domain name. So, I'm going to I'm going to change the the basically the namespace make it more specific for both the database and the base URLs of this project and there there are two uh, nice ways to extend those changes so that you're not interfering with the base configuration files we're going to use a, a docker compose dot override file and also um, a, a dot docker slash config dot php file to make those changes. So the first thing we'll do is, is create the, the Docker Compose override configuration file. Uh, that file does not exist by default, so you'll have to create it in the root of the project. I'll copy and paste some content into it. And then I'll actually, I'll get the, the base file and this customization side by side so that it's a little more obvious what's going on. Um, so on the left, you've got the base file and you've got that in the database environment, you've got the Magento 2 defined as the database name and user. Um, and over on the right, I'm just kind of um, overriding that particular piece of configuration with something that is more specific to this project. I'm, I'm calling this project sample, so I want the database to be called sample and the, the, the domain name of the website to be sample.test. Um, and that, that configuration of the, of the base URL happens in the varnish container because that is the first container in the environment to actually see a, a request from the browser. So we make that change in the, the docker compose.override.yaml file. And we'll need to also make uh, a similar change in another place. We're going to have to create a config.php file um, in the .docker directory. So we will want to copy that distributable file and, and just right alongside it have a, a config.php file so that we're not overwriting the, the base file. Um, so we'll, we'll do something similar here over in the database section. We'll just rename Magento2 to sample or something specific to your project.
And then down in the routes section, we'll make that change to the base URL. A couple different places to make that change down in the routes section. Okay, so now after you've done a customization in um, in the config.php file, you do have to run that build tool again. It's kind of a little bit peculiar. You don't want to forget that you have to run that um, that that build script again if you have customized config.php. And the reason for that is the those values in the config.php file are actually in, encrypted and turned into a string that that then is added as an environment variable to the docker environment so that encryption process actually happens when you run the, the build command so um, so you have to run that again after any changes to config.php Okay, so now well, we're ready, our, our configuration is done. We are ready to start this Docker environment up and we're gonna use another uh, CLI. With, uh, Magento is supplying a, 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 a Docker CLI at bin slash Docker that has several convenience methods and aliases to help you work with the Docker environment. So we're gonna use bin Docker up to start up the Docker environment. And then we're gonna use a script in the the root of the project called mutagen.sh, that will start the file sync. Uh, you don't wanna to forget to do that, otherwise you won't have any project files inside the Docker environment. So the bin docker up command will actually attempt to, to shut down any previous environments that were running. Um, so it does that first and then it goes through and it creates all your, your separate containers and the output looks like that uh, if it was successful. Now, now we're gonna use a uh, Docker command, Docker PS, just to take a look at those containers. The output is a, is a little bit messy, but the one thing I wanna point out here is that uh, the, the well-known port numbers um, for services like a database, for instance, where if you're used to accessing that on the, the port 3306, outside of the Docker environment, that's actually gonna have a, a different port if you're using some kind of uh, SQL browser or SQL application to help you with, with your uh, database manipulation. Um, you're gonna have to use a different port from outside of the Docker environment uh, and you can find that port using this command. Lots of other information there too, but I find it's, it's essential to to know the ports that those services are operating at outside of the Docker environment. Um, and then at the bottom there, I'm starting up the file sync with the, the command bash uh, mutagen.sh. So that just takes a moment and then it says it successfully created a, a session, which is basically, that means the two-way sync is active. Now, depending on the size of your file system and the size of that database that is, that is being imported, remember we put the database in a place where it's automatically being imported. So that, that started when we issued the, the bin docker up command, that database import started, you know, if you have a database that's five to 10 gigs, sometimes that can take half a day on a local system to import. So if after this point you're having problems, you're just gonna wanna verify both that the database is fully imported, and you're also gonna wanna verify that your file system was fully synced, your project files.
Okay, so the, the last um, file that we'll need to prepare in order to get Magento running is an important one, env.php. Now, uh, somewhat, somewhat diff you know, it, it might, it's not obvious how you would necessarily create this file. Um, I think ideally uh, uh, on a file or, or on a project that has already been running, someone may have a, a sample env.php file they can give you. Um, it, it's, it should, probably should be up to the technical lead of the project to kind of define a sample env.php that will work in your local and it would probably also have some application configuration changes like disabling things in Magento that should not be active in a non-production environment. Um, so ideally, you, you could ask around and, and find some kind of a sample env.php file. Um, but if there is not one available, I'll show you a, a convenient way to generate one that will work. So the first thing we're going to do is use the, the MGC SSH command to log into a cloud environment. So this is just SSHing, SSHing us into an actual cloud environment. And then we're going to use cat uh, app etsy env.php. This is just going to output that cloud env.php file to the screen and it's easily copy and pasteable that way. Um, lots of more elegant ways to do this, but I'm just showing what is the most accessible way to maybe someone that's new to Unix. Um, this, this just makes it a, a pretty easy copy and paste job. So I'm just copying this the contents of this file out of the cloud environment. And then I'm going to create the same file on our local and just paste the contents. Now this file does not have um, values that would work in the local environment. So we're going to regenerate this file um, so that it does have working values for those connections to services. So we're actually going to use the, um, the deployment script that is supplied by Magento. Remember earlier I told you not to use the build script, but the second half of a, of a deployment is the, is the deployment phase this script is safe to run on your local and it, and it has a, a few different advantages. It, it does a few different things that you would ordinarily have to do manually uh, in your local environment. Here it's regenerating the env.php file. So it's adding the, the appropriate connection information for the services that, that Docker has created. Um, and it also goes into your database and it replaces the base URLs with whatever we have customized. Um, and at the end there, it's running setup upgrade. These are all steps that you would have to do manually if you weren't running this script. So I, I find this script is very convenient to run during an initial setup. Okay, so we're, we're almost done with setup. There, there are a few more commands that we need to run. Um, we do need to switch to developer mode. Since we ran the, the basically what is trying to emulate the cloud deployment phase, um, all of our cloud environments are in production mode. The Magento is in production mode. Um, since we, are, we have the intent of doing development in our local environments, we're gonna wanna switch to developer mode. Um, so there's a command to do that. Um, there's a couple commands that will correctly configure varnish cache. And then we're going to need to re-index Elasticsearch. Um, it, if you're using Elasticsearch on your, your project, which I recommend, um, on your local Docker created an Elasticsearch container that is totally empty. 
um, the inform the data there was not copied from the cloud environments. So we're just gonna we're gonna populate the Elasticsearch container with data by re-indexing just your search index. The other indexes are in the database and they were pulled down uh, from the cloud environment and are in intact in the local environment. So we're just gonna re-index the search index. And then you're also gonna want to not forget to add whatever domain name you're using for the project to your hosts file. I won't demonstrate that. There's plenty of uh, other documentation on how to do that, um, but it's a good thing not to forget at this point. Sometimes that can bite you if you've forgotten to do that little small thing. Um, so just to demonstrate what that looks like, I've, I've copied these commands from the documentation, the setup documentation in DevDocs. So um, if you need to find them later, they are in the documentation. And these, these commands are kind of jumping into the Docker environment and running one command and then jumping back out. That's why the output, output is kind of verbose here is just because you're jumping in and out of the containers per command. So if everything is successful, that's what it'll look like. And now to, uh, to re-index the search index, we're actually gonna use a, a bin docker bash command, which, which will log us into the cloud docker environment. Now from here, we can just issue uh, bin magento CLI commands as normal, just re-indexing, clearing the cache, whatever you need to do. Um, that bin docker bash command just kind of puts you in uh, into the Docker environment, and you can use commands you're familiar with. So at this point, uh, if we're lucky and we've done everything correctly, we should be able to bring up the project in a browser and find that it, it completely resembles and completely recreates what we had in the cloud environment. And it does. Uh, this is pre-recorded, so everything was destined to go well. Um, so do, does anybody have any questions on this point? That was kind of the day one initial setup. Um, is there anybody have any questions on that? Yeah, I guess there was an, an extra discussion in, in chat about some things like how, you know, uh, how the processes run, et cetera, et cetera. So. Okay, um, let me take a, let me get the chat window up. So oh, lots of chats to catch up on. Oh, did you already answer all the questions? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just I'm I'm just wondering, you know, if uh, if if guys uh, are looking for something else on top of that, you know, uh, to discuss, for example, how how to run multiple projects, even though you cover that, but it's probably you know the uh, important thing, etc. So, guys, do you have okay. any any other questions? Yeah, I mean, if you have any more specific questions, you can shout them out to me now. Um, or I'll be available in the uh, Slack channel as well. I have a question. Sure. Uh, will your slides in this presentation be available on uh, SlideShare or joined in? Um, I let's see. I think I mean the presentation itself is being recorded, um, and I could figure out somewhere to put the slides as well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, just a short little last section here. Um, so how, how will this environment be maintained in an ongoing basis? So for, you know, if you finish up your development task and you've got, you know, three more, you're going to have to work on this project for, for weeks, months, or years. What will maintenance of this development environment look like? Um, the good news is most of what we've already done won't have to be repeated. 
Um, the, all of those commands only need to be run during initial setup. What you will want to do is just kind of start up and, and shut down the environment daily. Or if you're switching between different projects that have Docker environments, you're probably going to need to shut down the, uh, the, the, the Docker environment in order to switch to another project. So to do that, you're going to want to use the start and stop, bin docker start, bin docker stop commands. Um, you're going to, uh, uh, there are also bin docker up and bin docker down, but these both completely destroy any existing environments. So you are going to have data loss using up and down. Uh, your database is going to be um, deleted, basically. Well, I, actually, I don't think it's deleted, but it's, it's dissociated with the the container, so it's going to be unless you're a, a pro at Docker, um, you probably aren't going to be able to get the database back. So, so make sure you're not using up and down unless you intend to completely destroy that environment. Um, most people I know that are doing development want their kind of want their database to persist from day to day, from task to task. So in order to get that persistence of your data, use start and stop. And then also remember that uh, whenever you're starting up your Docker environment, you also have to start that file sync as a separate process. Um, so remember to run that mutagen command uh, every day when you start work as well. And um, you'll be using, pretty much every time you're developing with Docker, you're going to use that bin docker bash command to, to log in to uh, the Docker environment. And, and you can then interact with, with Magento as you usually do. You don't have to remember any funny aliases. You just go in there and use bin slash Magento to clear caches, re-index, whatever you need to do. Um, and then the other recommendation that I would make is just to become familiar with all the bin docker CLI commands. So just to review those, you can just go into the, the, the bin folder and then open up the, the docker script and it's pretty easy to understand what's there. You can see all the, the, the convenient aliases that Magento has provided and kind of see how Magento intends for you to interact with the, the Docker environment. And then you can also see kind of what's going on under the hood when you're using those, those CLI commands. So that can kind of illuminate how the Docker environment is working. So this is something I check every time I get a new version of, uh, of the Docker uh, implementation. I check here to see what updates have happened here. It's a good thing to stay apprised of. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. Um, love to hear any questions anybody has. Looks like everything was very clear, um, and hopefully everyone uh, will actually start trying it at least and um, uh, connect to us and Joe, you know, in uh, Slack channel if uh, some questions come up later. Thank you, Joe, very much. It was a great presentation. Um, um, thanks for you know sharing your experience. And uh, at the end of the presentation, I actually wanted to make a few more announcements. So, um, as you know, we have all this code open source. Um, all the Docker-specific uh, part of code is hosted in the Magento Cloud Docker repository. So, feel free to um, browse it and look essentially what's there. Uh, we have, I guess, 17 open issues right now, and uh, uh, many community members are very deeply involved into development of it essentially uh, so even like some features you were asking about in chat are already in progress uh, because we pretty much try to uh, drive this project as a community driven project so essentially whatever the needs are um, on the partners SI sites we're trying to get the things ready so that we can make the experience seamless for everyone and the final thing I guess uh, we are planning to, to drop the release for ECA tools very soon. So um, actually, um, 
look at the release notes from time to time and we'll also do an announcement in Slack channels once once this is out. So uh, I guess from my side that's it and um, thanks you again for uh, for leading this presentation for us. Um, see you next time. Thanks everyone, bye.